Hello everyone, my name is Oliver Inquist and this is actually my first live stream about myself and me and my gear and all that stuff. So welcome, I'm very excited for this. Um, I want to ask you to bear with me because this is the first time I'm doing this with a thing called Restream and I'm still trying to figure out how this thing works and right now I can't really see your comments anywhere and I don't know how to do it um, well so besides talking to you and maybe playing a bit I will be on the screen and try to figure out how how to interact with you um, I can see I got some viewers on Facebook that's nice um, and let me try to see if I can see who's, yeah, okay, but no comments yet, that's cool. Well, again, welcome to this Hangout. Um, I have set up my whole live rig. Um, and studio rig for that matter and I just want to like go through some of it play something for you and b b but before we get started please if you can write in uh, a comment section uh, if you can hear sound I think you can I can see it on my meters over here um, and again here are some of the <laughs> guitar stuff um, yeah well so <coughs> again I'm Oliver Inquist um, I'm a live um, guitar session player uh, and a studio session guy producer doing a lot of a lot of music stuff um, you can say almost like touring the world with different artists and when I'm not doing that I'm in the studio producing and mainly just you know making music and playing guitar that's what I want to do and it's nice I can do it so um, to like start with um, Let's just go through some of the gear before I play some for you guys. Like, um, if you guys out there know me beforehand, uh, you know that I am uh, like addicted to Yam Yamaha guitars. Um, I endorse them. And um, we have been working for like, 10 years or so, or may maybe maybe 12 years. And that's both on uh, guitars and some studio stuff and mainly uh, gear like effects and everything. That's, that's kind of cool. So let's start out with the guitars. Um, I have my custom made uh, Revstar. It's a Japan model and it has been uh, relict, like heavy, heavy relict, um, and I did some, um, or they did some customization for me. Um, so I have Lundgren Black Heaven pickups, and and this is kind of a really really nice setup because I have a switch in here. I think it's called Shallow Mega Switch P. Uh, that's from Shella, um, where I can just split pickups and put them together, like on on different in different ways. Um, like if I'm all the way down here, like on the bridge pickup, then it's just a bridge pickup, and I have let's 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 call it position one. Here's position two. I can split the pickups and put the two pickups on 
the outer size of the pickups together and put them in, I think it's in parallel and not serial. Um, if you don't know what parallel uh, is or sound like, um, well, the pickup positions on a Stratocaster, uh, the pickup position, f uh, what should we call it, five, um, two and five, no, two and four, sorry. Um, they have this like smoothness to the sound and that's kind of the same thing, same thing here. Let me just pull up some. I'm um, gonna just turn my amp up just a bit, just a sec. Like that. Oh, there's a wah pedal on here. That's not the case. Just a sec. Oh, that was better. Something went wrong there. Okay. So, like the the positions here is like something like that, and then let's call this position two. Kind of a bit more smooth sound, and then take the position three, uh, three. Then it's the two humbuggers together. Uh, and position four. I think it's the two inner coils, uh, again in parallel. Um, again, I get this smoothness sound. It's like... It's good for like funky things, and I do a lot of funk. Um, let's take the position two again and like... Like that. And then position five, it's the full a uh, bridge hamburger thing so like move something like that so there's a lot of different sounds in this guitar um, besides there's only like two um, control knobs and a switch and but it there's actually more in this because I have a, a drive switch it's called uh, and it's a thing that Yamaha made for this specifically gu guitar right here uh, if I pull out the dry knob I I tend to like roll off some of the bottom end and it, it it can be very cool in the position two and four and pull out this uh, dry knob and then push it in something like that you can hear that you get some more bottom end. Um, that's not always cool. That, that for me, I, I, when I do like very tight, play like very tight things, like funk or something like that, I tend to pull out the dry switch. So now you know why it's there. And this is just the volume knob and this is just the tone knob. I think so, yeah. But I never used the tone knob, so. Nice. There was there was this guitar um, that Yamaha made for me. Like I have the tuners with the locking system. Maybe you can see it right here. Yeah, locking. I like that. Um, I don't know which one it is. It's oh Goto. Yeah. Um, 
What else? Black hardware. Um, actually, the, the, the Relic thing, all the custom, uh, the paint and the customization of Relic, and it's made by a guy, um, Devonshire Guitar Works. He's very good at making like Relic really realistic. Like, just, just check out the neck. And no, that's not me. Or it's me, just, just a bit of it. But this guitar is actually, it's, it's not more than like two years old or something like that. Oh, and I see some comments here. Um, yeah. Hello, bro. And hello, Patrick. Nice to see you here. And Sean Anderson, hello. Been a long time. Hope to see you soon. But when you change between your pickups, uh, coils versus humbuggers, do you experience a volume drop? Uh, and there's some more here. How do you compensate for that? Well, yeah, I, I tend to feel a volume drop, but, um, and I actually talked to some guys that was like, yeah, we can, we can like solve that for you. Uh, just send us your guitar and. I told them about this shallow switch I have, and they were like, no, then we can't do it. Not that they can't do it, but there's something with the switch. Uh, but you can get build in some capacitors that, that can align the volume on all the, the positions. But for me, it's, it's actually okay, because I never tend to use my position four and two in in lead things or uh, distorted things and 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 when I use the, the position two and four it's more like for clean things and I don't really tend to use these positions together uh, if I go for some like clean stuff to my lead tone I of course switch from either position two or four and then to position one um, because I'm now I'm gonna play a lead tone, but then it doesn't matter if the volume gets high. You you always want to play like very loud, so that it's actually it's it's cool. Uh, but nice question, uh, Gerd Andersen, welcome, uh, guys. I can see that this is mainly no almost because Patrick is with us too. Uh, this is in English, so but I can see mainly it's Danish, but. I hope it's okay. I'm streaming out on YouTube and Twitch. Um, so that's why I'm doing this in English. And not that I'd have like any viewers right now, but um, maybe one day. Um, I would like to tell you that this is a thing I mainly would like to do once a week. Um, just doing some hangouts and Today it's just like behind the scenes, me, just, you can ask questions, what do I do, um, how was your last tour, uh, what are you doing now in this crazy time that we're not gonna talk about because we should just stay happy, yeah, and be glad we're not sick, um, or I am not, so, um, so I want to do this like once a week and maybe next time it's not gonna be behind the scenes, it's more like maybe it's going to be improvisation or uh, chords or just mainly playing or how do I tend to put things together, how do I write music. Maybe we should even take it to the DAW sometime and I will show you how I do the tracking or how I start producing something. Um, yeah, and just I, I just want to share some of my knowledge and yeah, kind of talk to you guys because right now all the guitar shows is out, cancelled, and yeah. So we have to like meet up here. Um, yeah. Well, this was. Th th I think that was that was all for this guitar. Really nice, really cool. I love this guitar, and I'm gonna pull it up um, in a bit again. But let's take another one right here. I have the 
No, I don't want to call it Blackie. I call it Black Raven. It has this sticker of a Black Raven on it. Um, it's also a Japan series. It's more... Um, it, it, it's, it's just a standard color, black. And I changed all the hardware to black on it. It has the same Goto locking tuners. Um, and it's it has this brown finish on the back, but you can see through. It's really nice. It also has the Lundgren Black Heaven pickups. I don't know why I fall in, fell in love in, with these pickups. It's just I just did. It's Black Heaven. I think it's like a metal pickup, and I play <laughs> mostly clean funk, but. They 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 kind of have their their own compression compression uh, in a very good way. Either I use compression in my um, in my preset too. Um, it's like I, ca I can I can set this thing. I can play this thing with an amp uh, with nothing between it and still have that kind of compression I like. So that's why I I don't know. They're good. They're, they are just great. You should overall check out Lundgren pickups. It's really, really nice. Um, and I've, I've been working with him for like three, three and a half years, maybe four, something like that. Very nice guy from Sweden. I, I think he, he, his firm is in Jankoping, something like that. Uh, it has the same switch. So Right now, it's it's like a backup guitar to the 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 green relic one, um, and actually the name for the green one is the Green Monster. Like this is the Black Heaven, right? Uh, Black Raven, sorry. Very good guitar. Uh, it has been around the world, and it's like I never set it up. I I, I just set this guitar up once, and it has been around. The world, like, I remember it has been in, in Beijing and it has been in South Korea and a very long trip, very cold um, luggage room um, where it has been for hours. I just took it out of the case and it's just, I didn't have to do anything. It even was in tune, <laughs> but enough of that stuff. It's good guitars, really like them. Um, I have a third one, um, this is also, well this is more for the Stride sound, no shit, it's a uh, Yamaha Pacifica, um, nothing has really been done to it, and but, but it, again, Lundgren pickups, I don't remember, I think they, these single cars is called the 50s or something like that. Uh, and this is the Heaven 57 humbucker. Really, really nice. Um, it has the, the vibrato and well, sometimes I, I kind of miss the vibrato thing. Uh, so that's why I play this guitar sometimes. Um, it's really different from the others. Maybe we should hear it. Um, not as smooth. Whoops, I'll just turn down this. Oh, the volume pedal is not. I'm sorry. I'm gonna set it up just a while. Well, we have some new viewers here. Yeah. Jake Sien. Welcome. And Patrick. Oh, I, I can't say that name, but Patrick. Johnson. <laughs> um, hello, welcome. Um, we're mainly just looking at guitars for now. Maybe I should tune this guitar. Oh, he's so prepared. Not. Or maybe a bit. Oh. I just took it out of the case and there was some tune. I didn't do anything to it. All yeah, right. Uh, 
And because there's vibrato on it, I gotta do it again. Well, actually, um, I was just thinking that why I mainly love guitars without vibrato and, of course, guitars with. Um, again, I do a lot of these like clean funk stuff, rhythm guitars. Um, and I think I, my like reference to other guitar players, why I like uh, um, a solid bridge, uh, like the Rift Star, or uh, even you can even get strats with no rebound on it and just like a fitch, fixed bridge. Um, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of uh, Nile Rogers. And he has this strat, and I think that's it's the guitar that has um, the most income <laughs> by playing sessions on it. It's, it's, it's amazing, but uh, and he has this this tone, this something with it that's just he's funky, he's good, um, and I kind of like the same thing. I like the way that the strings are. They are not as wobbly as on a vibrato, uh, but again, I love the vibrato, uh, but it's just really different. Um, well. So you should do something like like stratty sound. Let's take the other stratty sound because let's do something like this. good um, and of course the heaven like 57 pickup give me these really nice distorted sounds the bridge pickup, the single coil. Yeah. So that's 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 the Pacifica. Really nice guitar too. Let me just go to another preset right here. I think this one works. No, it doesn't. Ah. Okay. I forgot to set up an expression pedal for my board. That's why it's not functioning right. Um, I'm not going to get it. I'm just going to do a mod fix just in a bit. Um, or actually right now. Uh, let's do it. Hmm, this big setup. <laughs> yeah, 
like that. Well, now I don't have any wall pedal, but that's okay. Not gonna use it. Like that. Now I can turn the volume down and pull out without getting clicks and pops. So, that was it for the guitars. Uh, uh, mainly on the last uh, Ida Nilsson tour, we did um, uh, we did this winter. It was uh, fall, winter ish. We went to um, Austria and Liechtenstein, and yes, yeah, a good. It's not a, as quite as a big tour as it should have been. Uh, yeah, I think you guys know why. But it it was cool. It was a good trip. Um, I bought um, or brought this guitar and the Pacifica, and that was that was a cool setup. It was okay. Um, yeah. So we got Natasha Becker Vinder on the line. Welcome, Natasha. Um. Let's, well, next thing is the strings. I use DR strings, uh, the Pure Blues. It's in the blue package. Very nice strings. Uh, they are pure nickel. They, they tend to break really easy. Not that it's a problem for me. I don't know why. Well, I, I broke a couple. But it it is um, it is a string that it wants to break, but it just sounds really really good. I tend to play like two songs on them, and then I s just change strings. Um, <coughs> but the two shows is absolutely amazing. I I love it. Um, they have like I don't some kind of sustain and some kind of touch. That is really, really some something. There's it is something different from other strings, even their own other model strings. Um, I tend to use the Veritas from DR too, um, but I, I I think that's more like if I just want some strings on the guitar and it it's just hanging in the studio and and shouldn't you know sound muddy within two days or something like that. So, um, I have the Pure Blues on this guitar right now. Really cool. Um, then, let's go for the pick. Yep, chicken picks. And it's the 2.5 millimeter. It's 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 a, it's a thick pick, as you say. Uh, it sounds a bit weirder in Danish, but it is quite thick. I love them. Um, it's the bad ass, like bad A C C, right? Um, bad ass. Um, it's just like like a jazz pick or something like that, but. I like it because it's small, and I tend to like do. Uh, I play with it, and when I, I'm doing something like breaking up chords, playing with my fingers, I do it like this. So it just sits in my finger like that, and I can do that. I don't know what is all, the, all this is called, like, but yeah, it's 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 cool. I mainly hold my pick like this, and not not like that or something like that. But okay, um, very cool guys, nice company, chicken picks, check them out. Next up, um, I think it's my like pedal board, and I can actually show you. Oh, that's my pedal board like that. And I'm down in the corner, down in the corner. Yeah, um, my guitar goes 
into my pedal board today with a physical cable uh, but mainly I use um, a wireless system from line 6 it's called the Relay G70 um, I actually think it's out of production I don't know but I think so um, and the cool thing about that system is yeah you're wireless you can run around the stage as you want and just feel a rock and rollish. Um, <coughs> but another really cool feature in in this system is that you can have a cable between your guitar. Like I tend to use a nine to twelve meter cable, um, and yeah, there's no cable, but there is. There's the sound of it. Um, and you can actually go up to a like 30 meter cable or something like that and you will hear that your your top end will be rolled off more and more and more and um, I know there's a lot of Stevie Ray Wong um, fans out there and I think I heard a story about Stevie um, playing with a 12 meter no, not 12, 30 meter cable, just to achieve the sound he wanted. I don't know for how long, I don't even know if the story is right, but I heard it. It's a nice story. So, very, very cool system. Um, never had a dropout. I hear of guitar players that's having dropouts on this system, but for me, no. And I'm being honest, really honest. Never had a dropout. Um, it has a scan function that you need to use every time. And maybe that's why I never had a dropout. I don't know. But <coughs> after that system, and I don't think that you can see all of it. Um, you can't. But I have here, I have an expression pedal. And beside that, I have a vocoder. That's a boss vocoder right here. Uh, and then I have a freak out. Uh, I don't know if the freak out is set up right now. Just to give me some feedback. Like that. Um, I will show you the expression pedal, what I use it for in just a sec. Uh, and then I go into the Helix, and I think a lot of you that know me again beforehand knows that I play Helix, and again, uh, I endorse them. I really like this product. Uh, I've been using Helix since 2016? No, 17, I don't know, something like that. I, I think it's, it's uh, 16. Um, I actually... Um, what do you call it? Um, um, well, yeah. Um, I got the Helix and I didn't want to sell out of my analog pedal board for a year. I just wanted to try it out. And after a year, actually, I haven't used my analog big beep pedal board really nice uh, Strymon pedals uh, Sotic like all the cool stuff it really sounded good um, and but but I didn't I didn't really I was like I was just falling in love in this digital system um, not mainly because of the sound of it. Um, I, th I think it sounds good, really do. But all the other stuff, the intuitive stuff, how you can connect things, how things can be mono stereo, how you can like have effects um, just play through, even if you turn them off, it's called spillover, all of this stuff. Um, so I just like fell in love, um, 
Yeah, and I, I never took the analog board um, out again. So, um, and then from the Helix, I go to like the power caps right here. I have two 112 power caps. It's the power cap plus series. And here in the bottom, I have the um, two 12s. Um, and most of the time I use the small one just for gigging. And for the bigger venues, I use the big ones. And the cool thing with the big ones is that I can just take one with me if I want to and still have a stereo set up behind me. And it, it, it sounds good. It's really, really good. So, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Corona, no. Um, Rebecca, welcome. We're about like eight watching this. Well, that's good. Nice. <laughs> well, I think it's mainly Danish people, so I feel a bit that I'm doing it, it in the English, but I, I am. Um, so, the helix goes to the power caps, and I think you can see this cable right over here. Can you? Yeah. Um, it's an L6 cable. I think it stands for line 6, but L6 they call it. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, like um, connecting things with just one cable. So this cable goes to one cap and then one cable from that cap to the other. And it gives me stereo and program information. So I can switch sounds on my uh, power caps. And the power caps has this thing called the speaker Mo uh, yeah, speaker modeling, and that that tends to sound really, really great. So when I play like clean sounds, like I'm I'm really in love with the major nine chord. To me. I don't know why. play through uh, um, the Jarvis speaker, if you can call it that, or you can because it's called the Jarvis speaker. Um, but it's it's like a Jensen speaker type. It's, it's what is it? It's it's in Fender amp ish uh, amps, and I can go from the Jarvis to I think it's called the Brown that you find in in. You can find it in some Marshall amps, and that's when I play like dirty stuff. So actually, when I go from from the clean to the to the dry sound, I actually switch my speaker. Um, yeah, it just gives me another dynamic, and it's 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 nice. Um, and I'm gonna do a live stream someday just to tell you a bit more about these caps but not about line six and the caps like that but more how I like tend to to use it. Um <laughs> So you you already heard some of the the clean, and it can be like really tight. something with some effects on it like this like the uni vibe mm -hmm. 
Let's go to some more of the dreamy stuff, like some of this. Another Univibe with some space echo on it. Let's change camera. <laughs> to some of the dry side. I mean drive, not drive. And again, I st it, I'm still on my clean amp. I just like power it up with some drive and I switch the speaker in the cab and just let's go to some more drive. Like like that, or maybe go to the bridge pickup. drive and my lead with some dynamic delay on it and the dynamic delay is really nice because it just let me play my licks and don't disturb it because there's like a compressor holding down the delay and when I stop playing the delay opens up like that Yeah, that's really all my sounds. Um, yeah. So, <coughs> again, you're welcome to ask questions. It's just a hangout. I forgot to take my coffee with me. Hmm. Well, next time. That's that's kind of a rookie mistake. But next time. Um, Joachim, Joachim Mo. 
welcome to the stream. So, um, let me just see. Well, let's let's talk some intuitive ways to uh, integrate with some of your sounds. Like um, when I went through some of the sounds, I I did a couple of things with an expression pedal to like change something. So let's go to the pedal board and look at um, some of the presets, snapshots it is in this in this case. Um, that's not something we're gonna go further into, but I can change my sound with these buttons. It's like pedals. Oh shit, Oliver, you didn't know that. Um, but for example, this dream. sound. I can with my expression pedal right here go from 50% mix and the mix is between dry and wet and the dry is the guitar dry sound and the wet is the effect. So I can go from 50 so that's guitar and effect 50-50 and go to a hundred percent. So that will be like this. It's kind of nice. Um, you can do this. <laughs> and another cool thing with the expression pedal, pedal controlling this reverb sound is that I can, if I go to the reverb block right here, you can see that, I hope you can see it, you can see that there's more than one parameter that's changing. And that's the thing why I like like the, the digital modeler stuff. Because it's not only Helix that can do this, um, but Helix can, and this was just something I fell in love with. Because I can change my mix parameter on this preset with the expression pedal as I just did. But I can also change my level parameter at the same time on the same effect. But it doesn't have to be on the same effect. You can do it on all platforms. Um, so as you can see, I'm changing the mix, but I'm also changing the level. And it goes from plus one dB to plus 4, 2 dB. Um, and it gives me this. that sound but speaking of this sound I can do some other things too that's really cool like going to my clean sound playing some stuff like um, I can momentarily add an effect. And what is moment, uh, momentarily? Well, momentary it's called. Um, there's latching and there's momentary. So latching is turning on an effect pedal and turn it off. But momentary is holding down a switch and releasing the switch 
and it turns on and off. So I can like... Like something like that. I hope that was an okay example, sorry, with the microphone here. So that, that's a couple of intuitive ways to like um, doing something like live with your sound uh, or in the moment. Um, I can also do something like <laughs> using this uh, bleep chop trim effect. Uh, yeah, this, that is a tremolo, like very fast, and I'm using it like a momentary switch. So yeah, something like that. I can even like use some of my very weird effects also with momentary. Let's take something like this, add some delay on it, and go... It's a reversed delay or something, just really weird, but... It does the opposite of what I do. Um, so like, if I bend, and I... <laughs> it just bends it down, it's really cool. Or... Something like that. Yeah. So... I think that that was like my gear and all that stuff and um, I would like to do some more of these streams and maybe next time it's not going to be about gear but maybe we should just drink some coffee, no, let's just like look at some guitar stuff like some playing things, uh, how do you do, how do I do or how do you do different things, um, like trying to look at some improvising stuff as maybe some sweep. Like that. And how do I tend to think things? Something like that. But, yeah, keep an eye out, and I will give you a message when I'm going to do some new stuff. So, well, there's even lyrics on the video. I didn't see that before. <coughs> um, again, I will try to be here again next week. Uh, maybe it's going to be Wednesday. I don't know what time yet. But all of this stuff is new, and I got to figure out, well, how and when and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm glad that you, some of you guys was holding on, and I really hope you think that this was nice and kind of uh, some knowledge stuff that you maybe needed. So, yeah. Again, that was all for me today, so see you next week. <laughs>